practically everyone has had a sensation of a ringing sound in their ears now and then. Some people may describe it as a whistling or roaring sound. Familiar with this sound? It is one of the examples of the tinnitus sound. Tinnitus is a condition when a person hears a sound when there is no sound stimulus. It may sound simple, and yes, for some people, it is barely noticeable, but for others, it can lead to anxiety, sleep problems, or even depression. Classification Tinnitus may have these characteristics. Subjective, when only the patient can hear it, or objective, when the sound may be heard by another person. Pulsatile, when the sound follows a steady pattern, or non-pulsatile, when it appears randomly. Primary tinnitus is caused by hearing loss while secondary tinnitus has a specific known cause. Causes Tinnitus arises when the input to the auditory nerves is decreasing. For example, during silence. It causes a shift in the balance between the nerves in our brain and causes hyperactivity and increased bursting activity. The trigger of tinnitus may vary from obesity to vitamin deficiency. In contrast, Objective tinnitus is typically caused by an underlying vascular or mechanical disorder. Diagnosis To diagnose tinnitus, first, we need to know the condition of the patients. Researchers have developed questionnaires to assess the tinnitus situation of a patient. Some of the questions are, is the sound in rhythm with your heartbeat? How is the characteristics of the sound? Is it buzzing, hissing or roaring? Do you have a personal or medical history, such as experiencing head trauma in the past? Physical examination would primarily consist of otoscopy and tuning fork tests. Some patients may require detailed neurological examination, including balance, cognitive function, and cranial nerves. In case of pulsatile tinnitus, auscultation around the ear and neck may be needed. Objective tinnitus will be audible to the examiner. Since significant tinnitus is commonly associated with hearing loss, Audiometric tests for assessing the degree of hearing loss are essential. In cases where a vascular lesion, such as a paraganglioma, or a retrocochlear lesion, such as a vestibular schwannoma, is suspected, then imaging is required, which includes a high-resolution CT scan and contrast-enhanced MRI. In patients where a systemic disease is suspected to be causing or worsening tinnitus, relevant lab investigations may be carried out. For example, thyroid hormone levels, complete blood count, and blood sugar levels. Management. If an underlying cause for tinnitus is detected, then that cause should be dealt with accordingly. For example, if a specific medicine caused it, stopping the pill for a while will help. If it is caused by earwax, then wax removal may be needed. Although there is no complete or definitive cure for idiopathic subjective tinnitus so far, it still can be treated effectively. When tinnitus is associated with hearing loss, try to correct this loss using the hearing aids or surgically if appropriate. Tinnitus masking mm. strategies may help patients by playing some white noises, like turning on fans in the room or playing the static radio. Tinnitus masking devices are also available to help drown out the sound of tinnitus. The negative psychological effect of tinnitus can be reduced with cognitive behavioral therapy. For some cases, anxiolytic or sedative medications may be needed. There are online forums for patients to share and discuss their tinnitus experiences. But do not take things at the face value. Some herbal medicines, exercises, and dietary modifications may work for some people, but not others. Yet putting chemicals in your ears may do more damage than benefit you. Whenever in doubt, <laughs> consult a licensed medical professional and ear specialist. What's your experience with tinnitus? Share in the comments below and share this video with anyone you think would benefit.